Hello everybody and welcome to the video. Today we're going to be talking about enterprise applications and their consent settings. So to get started, we're going to go over here to the enter portal, enter.microsoft.com. And we're going to go down here to enterprise applications. And on the enterprise application blade, there is one for consent and permissions. There's a few different settings here. You've got your user consent settings, your admin consent settings, and then you also have permission classifications. We're going to get started with user consent settings. So if you're in an enterprise environment, most of the time you're going to just say, I do not allow user consent. Um, so that's what we're going to go with here. But you can also choose to allow user consent for apps from verified publishers for selected permissions, right? So we're going to go over here to this permission classification tab later. And this would allow them to use low impact permissions, quote unquote, as you classify them. And same thing for group owners over here, right? If they're a part of a Microsoft 365 group, they can link an application to the Teams tab, and this is going to block that. All right, so we're going to go ahead and save these settings. And then we're going to click down here to Admin Consent Settings. So users can request admin consent from apps. This is going to be a setting that you're going to enable if you have a help desk or a group of some type that should be processing these requests. Um, if you've got identity engineers, people that can approve specific permissions, identity and access management teams, you're probably going to want to link that group here. So we've linked Azure App Consent Approvers to the group. And we're going to, anybody that's in that group is going to get email notifications for requests, and they'll also get reminders for expirations. The default is 30 days. You can lower that. I like 10. All right. Now, in a world where we have allow user consent for apps that have low impact permissions, we can go over here to the permissions classification tab. And they give you some recommendations, you know, usually user.read, offline access, open ID connect, um, profile view, maybe email address. Those are pretty common permissions that will allow people to sign in as their corporate identity without necessarily having to create an SSO relationship. So those are pretty common. Um, if you want to select those, we'll go ahead and just create these for example purposes. Yes, add selected permissions. All right, so we've gone ahead and classified these as low impact. And then we can also do the same thing for medium impact and high impact permissions. So I'm going to take a minute and uh, work through some of those permissions. All right, so after playing with this for a little bit, you know, we've got our low classification permissions, which is going to be user read, offline access, open ID. Um, we've got a handful in here for medium permissions. You know, we don't necessarily want everybody to be able to have contact read or team read, device read, any type of policy read. And then under high permissions, we have like chats, read writes, tax simulation, files, calendars, mailbox settings, financials. Uh, mail. You would never want to give anybody you know, carte blanche access to those things. So, you know, this stuff's still in preview, but I'm sure that soon enough we'll have some magic wizards like we have with the low delegation permissions that'll let us do possibly conditional access or something on these other permissions. So, you know, I look forward to seeing what that happens, but this is the basic setup for um, consent settings and enterprise applications. My preference is to pin it to a group and require users to just consent to all apps, so if they want to, if they need permissions to something in Azure Active Directory, somebody should be approving that. So I hope you enjoyed this, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.